Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. In this program, we see how a journey into an unforeseen future began with a step of faith, today on Divine Deliverance. From the beginning, our Creator revealed His will to the common man. Individuals who listened to His call and responded in obedience. From the first Hebrew Avraham to the culmination of salvation in Messiah Himself, the Lord faithfully intervenes with His divine deliverance. We are so glad you've joined us today. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif, and we are in for a treat, deliverance. Anybody need any of that? <laughs> All the time. Yes. And, and it's divine deliverance. So it, we're looking at many different prototypes, yes, of Messiah, and you end with Messiah. He was the ultimate divine deliverer. That's true, and he's here for us today. People worry a little because of circumstance, but deliverance has been around for a few thousand years. It's going to be around for a few more. And we're starting with Abraham today. Yes. And yes. You're, not, you're not just teaching today, but we feel your passion in this series. We're excited about it. Well, thank you. It's just really hard to mess this stuff up. To go into the Bible and look at these noteworthies, I know that you are really going to be blessed. Not that I'm a blessing or we're a blessing, but oh, for goodness sake, you know, just these Bible characters, their stories worth hearing. That's right. Right now, let's go to our dramatic reenactment where Abraham enters the land of Canaan. Protectorate mine? No, I don't know. Maybe I'll go to you. I don't know. Are you still sure about this? I think it's more and more difficult. He said to me, and I don't know. He said to me that he will make us a great nation. I know. זה לא אני לא מפתיע, אבל אני בטוח. אני שמעתי את קולו. אני אבורך, לא רק אנחנו. גם אלה שבירכו אותנו יבורכו, ואלה שלא בירכו אותנו יקוללו. זה היה קול שאני לא אשכח לעולם. It had been a long journey, starting in Ur, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and they followed the banks of the Euphrates River, migrating northwest past Babylon to Haran. And now heading south into Canaan, Abram stops in Bethel, where he builds an altar and calls upon the Lord. דיבר אליי שוב. כשאלוהים מדבר אליך, אתה שומע את קולו? כי אלוהים של אור כסדין וחרם אינם מדברים. כשאדוני מתגלה, אני לא שומע שום דבר אחר. לפעמים זו לחישה. לפעמים זה כאילו השמיים נפתחים ורעמים מדברים אליי. זה מדהים. הוא בחר בי, בנו. לעשות את המסע הזה. הוא אמר, הוא אמר שלזרעי ייתן את הארץ הזאת. סזן בראשי ג'נסיס, ויאמר אדוני אל אברהם, לך לך, ויאמר, and he said, לאדוני, the Lord, אל אברהם, to Abram, לך לך, go. Go. And with that, Avram left a place and he went to a place. The word Hebrew, by the way, comes from a word Ibru, which means beyond the river. He was prompted to take a journey and in so doing became the father of all who take a journey. 
by faith. In so many ways, like him, we who walk by faith roll the dice against an uncertain future. I say that because Avram went to a world he knew not of, hadn't been there before, driven in effect by an impulse, an impulse that prompted him to begin in so many ways the story of deliverance. God's plan, interestingly, inhabits the mind and the heart of a man, and he's beckoned to go forth and inhabit and develop a nation, a specific place. It's interesting, it seems to me. Uh, again, it's a popular text in Genesis 12. The Lord says to him, get going, go out from your land. You go out from a place, which is very, very, very hard to do. We tend to hold on to security, throwing the dice against an uncertain future, taking leave and going on a journey is an act particularly in a time in the ancient world where the average person didn't travel 75 miles from their place of birth in the course of a lifetime. Imagine that. It's hard to retroject back into the ancient world because we get around, we travel, but Avraham took that leap. He goes to a place, he doesn't have kinfolk, we don't have pre-established webs of relationship. What do we have? We have a voice and that voice beckons him onward. People talk about the call of God. We hear that vocatio in Latin, the voice. And it's where we get the word vocation. We feel inclined to do something with our life because we hear a voice. What's interesting, by the way, we hear God leading Avraham to a place, to some space. But we see as well in the literature that Avraham erects a mizbeach in Hebrew, an altar we call it. It's interesting, in uh, the world today, in popular English, we talk about altar calls, you know, being called to the altar. And we think that's just classical Christian language. Well, to be sure, it is language of deliverance that is employed in a Christian context. But what if, like so much else, of what we call Christian, what if we have roots in the Jews? If we're all about looking at the good news through the eyes of the Jews, and here we begin the story of deliverance by noting a man who hears God's voice. His life and circumstances are transformed in the process, and he goes on a journey, and he finds an altar along the way. May that not just be his story, but may it be our story as well. And the Lord said unto Abram, Lift up thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Adonai Amar, Zar'i Yeke Afar Haaretz, Chatzet Haaretz, Hu Amar, והיא שלך. כולה. Secular people have trouble, understandably so, with the language, and God told me. I mean, is he yelling from heaven? What does that actually mean? Those that hear the voice of God, do the eardrums vibrate? The word secular comes from a Latin word meaning of this age, and I understand that there can be trouble with understanding what the Jews referred to as bat kol, the daughter of the voice, or to use New Testament language, that still small voice. Well, uh, the um, secular people have trouble with that, uh, but religious people have trouble with this. 
when we look in the Bible, people have an understanding of walking by faith, yes, but here it's to go to the land that I will show you. He says at the end of the verse, he says, uh, the Lord says that I will show you a particular place, land specifically. People of faith, of the Christian faith, have trouble understanding that when we read the Hebrew Bible, there is a territorial dimension to it. What do I mean by that? Well, never mind me on the front end. Professor W.D. Davies at Duke University spoke of the territorial dimension to the Old Testament promise, that Avram is promised a place, land, boundaries, Whereas, by way of contradistinction to the Newer Testament, believers are told that we get our reward, the place that we're led to is in heaven, that our commonwealth is there. But we look in the Hebrew Bible, the commonwealth is here, to an actual place, to a space. People that have trouble with that, I think, would do well to consider that even if you don't understand it, we should abide it, because it is so very explicit in the literature which is one reason why it makes no sense to me to argue that the Jews were not given the promised land, because it's so very, very explicit. It's not tacit, it's not inferred, it is explicit. Beyond that, another reason why it doesn't make sense to me is the truth of the matter is, redemption has to inhabit space. God shows himself in the world by what he does in the world so people can see. His power and purpose is attested through what he does with the people in a land. It's not just lofty religious principles. And for those that might have trouble with that, and I know that a lot of people who name the name of the Lord do, it's the same that's true in the Newer Testament. That is to say, uh, the Holy Spirit enters into a person and makes uh, God's will and ways known through what the divine inhabits. People can see deliverance from someone who's been delivered. Explicitly, the Lord says in the Johannine Gospel, the wind blows where it wills, and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know whence it goes or whether it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. We can see that by virtue of God taking residence in, people can see transformation, power, a kind of newness and be beckoned, perhaps, to seek out the source themselves. We live in a world today where there's so many problems. It's such a bad news world. The question is, is there any good news? Can God do something in the world? We do well to tell our story of what he's done in our world, what he's led us to. And we give voice to that, and we tell people, the God who led me, the God who saved me, the God who delivered me, the God who's manifest in the earth, and in my earth, you know what? He can show himself powerful in yours. If you only watch us on television, you're missing additional content available only on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can always visit our website, which is home base for all of our ministry activities and information. There you can sign up for our free monthly newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit the online store. You can sign up for a tour of Israel and Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. We're a ministry that loves to hear from all of you. Write into our ministry. Find us on social media. Let us know how these programs are making a difference in your life. Levitt.com. We're easy to find even on social media. Our Jewish roots. Also, life-changing for us and for you. We would love for you to join us on a tour to Israel. All the information is right there on Levitt.com. Right now, let's continue with Abraham's story as he receives a promising word from a vision. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield. 
your reward will be exceedingly great. As I remember, I remember that I had no children. I asked איזה מין גמול זה? אליעזר יירש את כל רכושנו. הוא לא מהמשפחה שלנו. אבל כן יהיה לי ילד שרי. כן יהיה לנו יורש. אדוני הבטיח. הבט אל השמיים, הוא אמר. ספור את הכוכבים אם תוכל. She wasn't a happy camper, now was she? I get it, truth be known, things didn't seem to be working out. It's embarrassing, too, to have a husband whose name is Father of the Nation but he doesn't seem to be getting on with the nation-making business. In antiquity, particularly, the women would have borne scorn for that. It would be construed as some kind of curse. Why is she getting in the way of all this, all things being equal? Blessing is attested, among other things, through bearing children. And year after year, she came up with nothing. We're told in verse 15, chapter 15, rather, the Lord comes to Avram in a vision. And people that have trouble with Abraham hearing God's voice similarly can uh, say, what do you mean he had a vision? Uh, this is stuff uh, people are in mental hospital wards for hearing voices and uh, seeing visions. I should say, by the way, not that I feel particularly compelled to offer an apologetic for that. If you look at Jesus, he was a storyteller. And stories, in effect, cast visions on the mind. They paint on the mind so people can see. Now, he has a vision wherein he hears the Lord saying, don't fear. And he says, I will be your great reward. It's very interesting. Well. Avram is promised that there will, in effect, be a payday, that is, that things are going to work out. It might not seem so, but God's power is made manifest in human weakness. He's beckoned out. He looks at the heavens. Majestic are they. City dwellers don't see him so much. Everything is just obfuscated. It's hidden behind clouds and smog. Well, Avraham is out there, and he hears that voice. And that voice says, so will your descendants be, as big as all of that. And what happens? We're told that Avraham, he believed it. Now, the word in Hebrew is the word amen. In church, folks say, amen, brother. You know, that's good preaching. I think that's true. And oftentimes to say amen to something is, yes, that's my understanding, amen. I believe that doctrine. I believe that truth. Well, say amen to that. But this isn't just believing a doctrine. This is believing at the core. You know, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It's the conviction of things not seen. A lot of times people think that faith and promises, all that's the stuff of younger people. These guys have been on Social Security for a few years by now. Uh, they have their AARP card. Sometimes as we get older, and I'm 62, I'm talking about myself, not you, we tend to think that God's promises and blessings and newness, it comes to the young. Well, if that's what you're thinking, consider that even for you, God can conceivably have a reward. What happened here is Avraham believed that. He amended it in Hebrew. He said amen, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. There's another Hebrew word for that, sadaka, to be righteous. Uh, there's something uh, cleansing. There's something religious. There's something noteworthy. 
when someone lays hold of the promise and they believe it, it clears away the clouds. Oh, friends, would it be that we walk by faith and not by circumstance? And we then can enter into the Hall of Fame. The author of Hebrews speaks of the faith walkers. And our man Abraham and his wife Sarah are there in the list. And may we join them and be part of the great cloud of testimonies that give voice to the fact that God is in the world and he brings about deliverance. If there's a word for today, for today's program, I would pick faith. Yes. Am I off on that? No, and if there's a word for today that's so necessary, it's faith, to believe God for the future, yes? And walking by faith, not by sight, that's exactly what Abraham had to do, and Sarah or Sarah had to do that. Uh, walking into a new land that they had never experienced, they didn't know where they were going. No, and that's really tough when you think about it. Uh, uh, we, we like to know where we're going, uh, but uh, uh, he didn't. You know, he's just kind of reaching with uncertainty into the future, but God knew where he was going. And we talk about this all the time, too, with Abraham and, and Isaac to be told to sacrifice your son. That was something that the other gods did. They sacrificed children, but this God, you know, God of the Hebrews, the new Hebrews to do that, that's very strange request, isn't it? It seems to me, yes, of course, but it's a later story with Abraham, with Isaac. But one of the things, the upshot of that is it clarifies in the literature that Hebrews don't do that sort of thing as distinct from others round about. Uh, the way to placate diet, deity, rather, uh, in antiquity was to give us something special. What could be more special than your own children? Uh, but one of the things that is apparent in biblical literature is God says, no, that's not the way. I will provide a sacrifice. And isn't that the God's honest truth in the person of Yeshua? Mm. I think faith is through this whole series that you'll be teaching. Who else will we be hearing about? Oh, goodness, all these noteworthies in the Bible. I mean, it's uh, Cecil B. DeMille said, give me any two pages, I can give you an epic motion picture. And uh, you're going to be seeing epic pictures, by the way, Isaac and David and Moses and all these noteworthies. And we're going to see how faith is the scarlet thread. Uh, I'm thinking of what you're wearing, by Thank the way. You. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the uh, scarlet thread that, that, that runs through the literature. And they're prototypes, if you will, of Messiah. That's, they're each a little divine deliver. There's divine deliverance in each of the people that you picked. Yeah, there surely is. I think it's important to remember that God's in the deliverance business, and uh, that's so true for you, for me, for we, that, uh, and it's not just saving our souls, it's saving our lives, and, and people fear. I get that, but uh, as we open up the pages of biblical literature, we see a good God who loves his people, who makes a way as they reach into the future by faith. It's from Abraham to Yeshua. Yes. Yes. There you go. We'll be right back. Our resource on this program, The Promised Seed of Abraham Lineage Chart. In appreciation for your donation of $20 or more, we'll send you this beautiful original artwork showing an overview of the family tree of Jesus, beginning with Abraham. This work of art is suitable for framing and also includes space for you to add your own names to the family tree. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for the lineage chart or visit us at levitt.com. Kirsten and I, in our last 30 years of marriage, have had some wonderful moments in our lives. And one of those is taking a tour to Israel, where we walk where Jesus walked, but also where Abraham had much of his life. We would love for you to join us on a tour to Israel. You can find all the information on Levitt.com. Also, remember our weekly resource. Take advantage of that. And we thank you for your donation, your financial donation 
to this ministry. That makes a difference, doesn't it? It surely does. And uh, anytime someone walks by faith, it makes a difference in their life. And people of faith support faith works. And we want to thank you for that. But to your point, by the way, Abraham uh, lived a part of his life in Eretz Canaan, the land of Canaan. And we live a part of our lives as we read the Bible. People are already there intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. Why not materially? That's a great way to get it all together before we go meet our, meet our maker. <laughs> and next week, who are we learning about next week? Isaac. Yes. Yeah, the good, promised son. Good stuff to come. That's great. Yes. So we end our program today with a wonderful song by Marty Getz, all about Abraham. But for now. Yes, as we always say, Sha'alu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Unto my children of all generations, everlasting Israel is our Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store, there, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministry.